Okay, so after the success of Samuel Leeds coming on the channel last time, we've brought him back, and this time we're filming things at a different location. He's actually invited us um, to his mansion just in the Beaconsfield area. Um, so, Sam, thank you very much for kind of coming onto my channel, but from your house. It's great to be here in my own house. <laughs> Thanks for coming down. Yeah, so last time we went through, we went through quite a few different questions last time, didn't we, in terms of how you got started, yeah. um, and ultimately to where you are today, which is you know, an incredible place to be in, and what you're doing now. So you mentioned last time things have changed since single lets, HMOs, and now you're doing much bigger deals. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, I've still got a lot of single lets, yeah. and I've still own a lot of HMOs. I've put a lot of them onto housing associations, but now my main focus, is development deals, bigger deals, because I realized that a big deal and a small deal take just as much energy, but big deals just make more money. Yeah, so what, 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 so as for people that don't know, what is property development? Property development is is when you, instead of, instead of investing in a house, yeah. so if you buy a house and you just buy it, invest in it, sit back and wait for it to go up in value, development is where you're gonna either force the value up, yeah. so buy something, convert it, maybe split it up into your apartments, um, or convert a commercial building into residential units. Or development is simply when you're gonna build something. Yeah. So buying a piece of land, get, getting planning permission, and then selling off the land or building on it. We've, we've, we've done all the things I'm talking about I've been doing successfully for the last few years. But for me, it started in investment. Yeah. I started investing. I wouldn't have had a clue where to start with development. But I think the natural progression is to, is, is to then go into development because that is where the money is at. Yeah, 100%. So do you feel like you wouldn't, have a, you wouldn't have been as successful in development if you didn't have that underlying property knowledge? I think so, yeah. Because I think that you can't just become a developer yeah. kind of overnight. I think the years of being a property investor, and I kind of organically fell into it because, I mean, even buying a property and turning it into a HMO, I guess in a very small sense is kind of property development. Yeah. But... It's just, yeah, it's just a bigger, it's just a bigger transition and you can put titles on it. I'm an investor, I'm a developer, I'm a, it doesn't matter. Really, it's just about making money yeah, and having absolutely. fun. Yeah, so is that kind of, with property development, do you kind of sell the properties on for that initial kind of quick cash inflow or do you refinance it? Because property development can work in a similar way to BRR, can't it? Yeah. Where as long as you get that big chunky profit in it, bam, refinance it and then you've got, loads of free houses rather than just one which you'll get on brr you've got a whole site potentially yeah. which you can then let out you've got your initial cash back to go on to the next deal yeah so it's a great question and i think that probably you should have one as the plan and one as the exit yeah so if it's a case of are you going to sell it or are you going to refinance it like the castle for instance that we that, 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 that we're renovating at the moment yeah. it, it wouldn't make sense to, to refinance some of those those units because You've got to ask yourself, once you've built it or once you've refurbed it, you've got to ask yourself, would I buy it today? Yeah. Would I buy it today? If I wouldn't buy it today, then I'm going to just sell it and I'm going to put the profits into a new deal. Yeah. If I would buy it today, and I think it, it, it depends on the return, you've got to look at the return on investment. So, so we built um, some houses last year and it would have worked either way because they were quite cheap houses. The houses were worth about 200 grand. Yeah. The rents were about seven. 750 uh -huh. so it's kind of oh well we could refinance yeah. if we refinance the rent is going to cover the mortgage and leave us with a bit of profit yeah. but on some deals like we've, we've we've got some sites at the moment around buckinghamshire which is where i live and the the houses are going to be worth about two million yeah. and the rent is going to be about three or four grand so, so to refinance it would be terrible because you wouldn't be able to so i think it really depends on the on the on the deal yeah. But having one as an exit strategy is probably smart because you never know what the market's, where the market's going to be at by the time the development is finished. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That makes complete sense. So I think you just touched on the castle there. Um, for people, that, kind of, what is the castle? So, Yeah, so 20, a 20 bedroomed castle. Yeah. Um, it is called Ribsford House. It's located in Beaudley, okay. uh, Worcestershire, mid middle of England. And we bought that for £800,000. We've currently got planning to build, not to build, we've currently got planning to convert it into 10 apartments and four houses, yeah. but we're in the process of going through a full planning application to be able to build more houses than that and more apartments than that. Um, we've spent about a million pound on it, making it airtight. Um, we own it now and... Um, yeah, it's going to be an amazing project, slow project, because we bought that in 2018, and since that, 
we've built houses from scratch and sold them and all kinds of stuff. But um, it's it's our biggest project and it's one that I am learning loads on. Is that kind of, so it's planning takes a while as well, doesn't it? Planning Being a castle, I'd imagine there's a lot of kind of restrictions on it, you know, similar to kind of grade listed buildings. It is, it's, a, it's grade two star. Yeah. There's bats. There was Japanese knotweed. Wow. Serious structural problems. Yeah. Everything that could be wrong with a building. All in this one. Yes, and I've just written a book, as you know, about property development. Yeah. And I talk about all of the, uh, in fact, some people that don't like the book say, this is just a book filled with mistakes. Why would I want to read a book about mistakes? And I talk about all the times I've lost money, yeah. the deals that have gone wrong, but it's like, it's not really a book of mistakes, it's a book of lessons, yeah. which is surely, yeah. that's the point of a book. So the book isn't just about how much money I've made, it's also about how much money I've lost, the development deals that have gone wrong. And when I started to do in development, it was, it was a tough, I, I was probably overconfident yeah. because I thought, oh wow, I've been in property for 12 years, but it is a different, it is a different skill being an investor and developer when you need to, you know, price up how much things are going to cost, and it is it is a little bit of a different beast. Yeah, so I suppose with a property investment, you most people, well, quite a few people, even have managing agents. There's a lot less to it. Development, you've got so much more to worry about. So, do you have a project manager that you work with on your sites, or is it something you do yourself? Yeah, we do. Well, we do it kind of in house. My my, my brother in law is is um, got 16, 16 years in construction. Okay. He is a chartered. A surveyor and also yeah. a chartered cost manager so he works full-time within the business and he oversees all of the projects um that, that that we that we have on so you know which is which is great also my my brother is pretty much full-time in the business my wife my brother's wife yeah. so we're you know we're quite a strong unit yeah definitely so that's what i suppose that's a lot of what people should look at people that you can bring into your business um to help you fulfill that so touching you just touched on your book so in that you mentioned that you want a thousand houses what do you mean by that? A thousand houses is that a year? No, <laughs> that would be quite something, wouldn't it? To buy a thousand houses a year. I've never owned a thousand houses. I thought my, my initial plan yeah. was I wanted to accumulate my portfolio to, be, to a thousand houses. Yeah. I met Lord Sugar in 2017 and we had a round table session, which lasted an hour, an hour and a half. And he went through my business plan and he told me that my plan to accumulate a thousand houses, to invest in a thousand houses, was a terrible plan. Okay. And it was actually him that kind of got me thinking a little bit bigger. I mean, he's a massive property guy. So I thought he'd be like, oh, great plan. But he said, I haven't got a thousand houses. Why do you want to do that? Yeah. And, and it was actually him that kind of got me thinking a little bit different. Um, and then I went on and did some training with Grant Cardone. Yeah. Same story, Grant Cardone doesn't buy lots of little houses. Grant Cardone does big projects and pulls people in on those projects. So around about 2017, 2018, that was when I really kind of, and I talk about it in the book, The Secrets of Property Development, that was when I really changed my business plan yeah. um, and, 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 and decided I don't want a thousand tenants. I don't want a thousand boilers that could potentially break. That's not my plan. I, instead of growing my portfolio this way, I want to grow it this way. Yeah. I actually sold off some of my houses some of my smaller houses to put them into bigger deals. So yeah, just by kind of, so you mentioned that earlier, didn't you? So you have the same problems, no matter whether you're just dealing with one property or a hundred large ones, yeah. it's all the same kind of stuff. Yeah. So in terms of the big deals, how, how do you find them? What, what kind of deals do you constitute? What, what do you look for in a deal? So at the moment, we've got five sites yeah. um, under an op op option agreement. Um, one of them we, we bought outright and they're all pieces of land and we find them by um, bird's eye view, yeah. <laughs> looking across, also just driving, looking for sites, looking for, uh, not on market, not with agents, just looking for little parcels of land in fields where we think, hmm, there could potentially be houses there or apartments there. Yeah. And then we send a letter, very similar to how I used to do property investment deals. We'll, we'll write to the owner, which who will find them on land registry. We'll send them a letter and say, I noticed that you own this little parcel of land and um, would be interested in buying it? Would you be open to having a conversation? And the purpose of the letter is simply to arrange a conversation. Yeah. The purpose of the conversation is to simply arrange a viewing. Yeah. And then we'll meet at the site. We also target people that have put planning applications in and failed, because if they've put a planning application in and failed, often they're a little bit disappointed. Oh, I can't get planning, but we might apply in a different way. So an example of that would be, there was a, um, a site in Buckinghamshire and the guy had applied for planning twice, 
to build an apartment block in, 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 on this little piece of land. And he would, was declined twice. And I thought, well, actually, this council, they don't want more apartments. They want houses. Yeah. And also, an apartment block would look weird because there's no apartment blocks anywhere in sight. So he'd failed twice. Once he'd applied for six apartments, second time he applied for five, and he thought, oh, four apartments probably isn't really going to be profitable enough. I don't know. I'm done. So, okay. so we came in and said, look, we're interested in, in buying this site. Um, and he said, well, what do you, what, what, what's your plan? What, 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 what do you want to do with it? And we ended up securing it on an option agreement. Yeah. And we then applied for planning, and we got planning accepted. But not for apartments, but to build two houses. Yeah. And then we pushed the value of the land up, reassigned it onto a self-builder yeah. and made us uh, made just over a hundred thousand pounds clean profit on it without lifting a shovel so and, and when that happened and don't get me wrong before i did that i, I failed at that yeah. <laughs> which i talk about in my book um but but when, when, when that happened i'm like man why 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 buy a house that's going to make me 300 pounds a month yeah. when i can make a hundred thousand pounds yeah, that you'd be lucky for that one house to make you a hundred thousand pounds in its for the period you own it. Exactly. Whereas with that one deal, and I suppose with that, because of the way the the agreements you're using, there's a very minimal cash outlay. Very little. Well, we we paid a ten thousand pounds non-refundable deposit. Yeah. yeah, on the on the option. What is the option? What what is an option agreement? Just for people that are completely new. So an option agreement is when you buy a property, but you have the option to complete on it down the line. So people probably know what a um, PCP, I think it is, when you buy a car, and you, you, you buy a car, but then you have, you pay a monthly maintenance fee or whatever, and then you have the agreement at the end of the term to either walk away, drop hands, or you pay a balloon payment and you have it. And it's no different. So, so when you're buying a piece of land, you don't, you don't want to buy a piece of land and pay cash for it from an auction, unless you're damn confident you're going to get planning. Yeah. But if you're damn confident you're going to get planning, they probably already have got planning. So what you want to do is you want to find a site where you think you can get planning, and then you're going to secure it and you're going to say, look, I'll give you 100 grand or whatever I'm going to give you, but I'll give it you in six months subject to planning. Yeah. You then have a first option on it. So they can't sell it to anybody else. Um, and then in that time, you apply for planning. And if you get planning, boom, you buy it. Yeah. And if you don't get planning, well, then you've paid, you've lost a little bit of money on architect fees, yeah. drawings. You've lost a little bit of money on the planning application. But ultimately, it's worth it because yeah. the risk is low and the reward is high. Yeah, so as you mentioned there, so that's how you did the other deal. So very low risk, but then £100,000 profit on that on that deal there. Exactly. Yeah, and the risk was, well, on that occasion, we paid a £10,000 non-refundable deposit, but we were, I was very confident. And we paid about, probably about ten, eight or nine grand, maybe 10 in, in, in other costs. But I never owned the site. And, um, and, and and that worked really well. And we've, we've done plenty of those. And, and that's relatively easy for people to kind of, who want to make that life, those kind of life changing sums to do that, to learn how to do themselves really. You don't yeah. need any construction experience. You're not going to need to project manage it. Yeah. You just literally need to know what plan permission might be possible. Look at what's going to fit in in the area. Exactly, well, one of my students, Lawton, who we did a, a financial freedom challenge together with, and he had no money at all. We found a piece of land Similar sort of situation, but this was in Manchester, which is where he lives. And the piece of land, um, it turned out that the owner that owns the piece of land wanted to develop it, yeah. actually had planning permission, but he didn't have the money. Okay. He didn't have the time. He didn't have the expertise. So we came in and we said to him, how about we'll joint venture with you? Yeah. We, you own the land. Let's get the land valued. We valued the land and we said, we'll pay you for the land once we've built. And once we've built, and we've got a plan push for six houses, we already had, but, we, but once we've built, we'll then sell the houses, we'll split the profits after we've given you your 200 grand for the land. Yeah. So again, it's like Lawton, this wasn't my deal, this was a deal that I helped uh, my student do and secure, and, and, and now they're getting started and the contracts are signed and everything, but Lawton has got no money, yeah. he's not got loads of experience, he's just porting a building team, but what he's done is he's been the middleman. But that deal will make him six figures profit and it will probably end up being as much work as a 50 grand little BRR deal. Yeah. That, that, but the, you know, the, the reward is huge. Yeah, and you know, with that as well, you don't really know about that until you're out there speaking to people, trying to find, okay, so most people think this guy's got plan permission. There's no point even contacting this person yeah. because the, clearly they're gonna do it themselves. There's loads of different things. Whereas when you're having those conversations and just seeing what's possible, 
you can find creative ways to structure deals. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Another really popular one as well is turning, because at the moment there's a lot of offices, yeah. and, and as you know, commercial, va commercial properties are valued based on their rents. Yeah. Commercial rents are dropping. They dropped 14% in the during lockdown in London. So so commercial rents are dropping because everyone's working from home. Yeah. Commercial prices are dropping, but then residential prices are going up. Yeah. So again, a lot of a lot of students on, on our academy are finding commercial uh, buildings. They're buying them, then they're converting them into residential properties. Yeah. It's easier than ever to do that with planning, and you can often do it with just permitted development. Switch it over, push the value up sell it, refinance it, or whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunities out there. So I suppose that's all we've really got time for today. Thank you very much for letting me interview you in your house. Um, really appreciate that. So thank you very much for watching this week's videos, guys. If you've enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up. If you think it's good, or, or if you think it's bad even, do give it a thumbs down, let me know. I'm sure you guys will anyway, you're not very shy about that. Um, but thank you very much for watching, guys, and make sure you subscribe. Bye for now.